Our next speaker for today is, is Mr. Paul Satish Moses, having played with the master blaster himself, Sunil Manohar Gavaskar, right? Good friends with him. Paul Satish played for the Ranji Trophy for eight years before joining the corporate HR of Sanmar Group. He served in the sports ministry for the last 30 years, 20 of which he worked full-time. Currently, he is the director of Christian Sports Fellowship. He is also a global leadership member, team member of the International Sports Coalition, a partnership for sports ministries, churches, NGOs, youth ministries, resource agencies and sports individuals in close to 200 countries around the world. Paul is married to Grace, who runs an NGO, Sangeeta Charitable Trust for underprivileged kids, widows and also involved in transformational work in over 10 very, very poor villages. Together, they serve the Lord, positively affecting the change in society. Please put your hands together and give a warm Hyderabadi welcome to Paul Moses. Thank you. Good morning. Um, it's really nice, great joy to be here with you. As I share my own life. Um, my, my best example, you know, I played cricket for a long time. And then I get to meet this really brilliant cricketer. How many of you know, I mean, everybody knows cricket? I do bad, you should know. Just put your hands up so I need to know. Right. Great. The reason I ask is, my wife has zero knowledge of cricket. <laughs> Even after 30 years, she's sitting here. I'll tell you an example. I met this really, uh, South Africa had one of the best cricket teams the world has ever seen. This was late 70s. Trevor Goddard was his name. He played with, Ed, I know some of you will remember, Barry Richards, Eddie Barlow, Colin Bland, Green Pollock, Peter Pollock, best players in the world. And he was the captain of this team, Trevor Goddard. So I met him in South Africa when we were going for training of sports ministry leaders, I met him. And we became good friends. Then after some time he said, Paul, I love you so much because you're a cricketer. I want to give you this. And he said, this tie, I got it at the MCG, Melbourne Cricket Club. They celebrated 200 years, uh, bicentenary or whatever you call it. They gave me this tie. It is precious. And I'm old now. I want to give this to you. So he gave it to me. Man, that was the most precious moment of my life. Getting it from Trevor Goddard captain, one of the best all-rounders of the world, and I treasured it. I brought this tie with me, and the story is not over. Just listen to this beautifully. <laughs> I brought this tie home, and I packed it in my suitcase, and I kept it nicely, and I brought it back home. I think about three, less than three months later, backyard, we have a little space, clothes are drying, and I'm looking, where's the tie? And that Melbourne Cricket Club tie is there on the clothesline. <laughs> and my clothes are drying on it. Who did it? My wife. She has no idea how precious cricket is. And I get to live with her for 34 years now. We are still married and happily married. She's the boss of the house though. Doesn't know cricket. I can't watch television at home. Cricket, I cannot watch. Stop it. It's useless game, she tells me. <laughs> the second example is, I will tell you, and then we'll go back to my life story. Um, I'm a young cricketer, 18, I think I was 18 and a half or 19. I'm going to play against Bombay in the semifinals of the Ranji Trophy. Ranji Trophy? People know? Yes. Semifinals. This is Wankade Stadium. Great. I'm still 18 and a half. Somebody got sick and they called me in as the university player, they called me in. And I'm at the Vankade Stadium. First day, Chennai, Tamil Nadu playing Mumbai, semi-finals Ranji Trophy. So I get in now and those days you warm up a little bit. So I went into the ground and as I entered and I'm still 18. And then as I saw Sunil Gavaskar, Ashok Mankar, Carson Gauri, Eknath Solkar, all the Indian cricketers going by to warm up. And I'm standing there and watching these guys. I'm supposed to warm up, play against them. And I'm watching. My captain, Venkat Raghavan, came up and said, Hey, not up and What are you doing there? Don't warm up, he said. And I'm standing there watching these guys. He's such a brilliant guy, Kavaskar. My hero. Uh, I named my son Sunil. She didn't know about it. She didn't know. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
My son's name is Jonathan Sunil Moses. I put it in. She didn't know it was Sunil Gavaskar. He's 32 years old with two kids now. We have a great time at home. So this guy, first match, I got 87 runs. Really good. Tamil Nadu all out 197. We were, you know, always lose to Bombay. 197, but I'm 87. So I Great knock. Next day, first day, this was first day, four day semi-final. Second day, Gavaskar walks into the dressing room. So he walks up. I'm sitting right at the end. So he walks up. Everybody in our dressing room, all our test cricketers uh, in the Chennai Tamil Nadu team sitting there. He walks straight into the dressing room, 8.30 in the morning. Sits. I'm at the end. He taps me on the shoulder and said, hey, well played. I want to see you play for India. And then he gave a nice, beautiful foreign glove. You know, in those days, English glove. This was 77, 76. So he wrote, all the best, Sunil Gavaskar. And he signed it and he gave it to me. Great moment. And I had it on my shelf for a few years. <laughs> you know what is coming, right? <laughs> I think somebody came home and she said, do you want this? He can take it. It's causing a lot of dust in the house, so you want to take it. I lost that glove. Can you believe this? Anyway, that's a little bit of my story. No Bible versus doctor, sorry. Okay, I want to say this since we are talking about the purpose of life. You know, rewind, I'm 60 years old now. Now, when I look back at life, I know one thing for sure, and this gets serious. That God has a plan for your lives. Amen. He has a marvelous plan. And that plan, you will look at it at 60 and say, God, how lovely you have been in my life. You will look back and say, not now, but when you come to 60, you will say, God, how brilliant you have been. I was seven years old when my dad put a cat on my head. We were in a village, Ramanathapuram. My dad was a doctor. So at seven years old, I'm stand, sitting here. Nobody played cricket. Nobody played cricket in my family. So at seven years old, I have a hat on my head and I have this photograph with me. And I'm wondering as I look back at this photograph, why did my dad ever do that? At seven, I did that. At 13, 14, I started playing on the streets of Chennai. Became a street cricketer. I wonder why I did that. At 14, I started playing for Tamil Nadu in the schools level. I wonder what, why that happened in my life. At 18, I started playing for Tamil Nadu and I always wondered why this happened in my life. At 25, I became one of the best cricketers in Tamil Nadu. I wonder why. And at 25, 26, I became a follower of Jesus Christ in the middle of my career. And I wonder why then. And then now as I look back. Then I started working in sports ministry for the past 30 years. I've been working in sports and mission 30 years. Now I look back and say, God, all that you have done in my life, from seven years when I put my hat on, until 60 now when I speak with you, you have a great plan for my life. Every event in our lives, everything that happens in our lives has a great purpose. Everything. So don't discount, like doctor said, if you lose a job, God has a plan for it. It is by God's divine will when I surrender my life to him and say, God, this is my life. You take it and use it. God will use it. You remember the story, I always think about Moses, the little boy. At two years, when the boy floated on the river Nile, it was not an accident, but the divine will of God. When Pharaoh's daughter came to have a bath that day on the river Nile, it was not an accident, but the divine will of God. When Pharaoh's daughter picked up the baby and looked at Moses in the face, it was not an accident, but the will of God. And when she looked for a person, for a Hebrew mother to look after the baby, it was not an accident, but the divine will of God. For 30 years, for 40 years to grow up in Pharaoh's house, looking into the eyes of Pharaoh, it was not an accident, but the divine will of God. And at 40, when Moses walked out of the house and told his grandfather, Bye-bye, Pharaoh, I'm going into the desert. And he lives with Jethro. It was not an accident, but the divine will of God. For 40 years, God trained him in the desert. And then when he was 80, God looked at Moses and said, Come to me, I want to speak with you. And on that mountain, when Jesus speaks to him, God, God speaks to him. At the burning bush, he says, Go to my Pharaoh, go to Pharaoh and tell him, Let my people go. And then he goes up to Pharaoh, stands in front of him, 
eyeball to eyeball. And he looks at him and says, Dad, granddad, let my people go. It was the divine plan of God. All through the years, God's plan stays. And I look back at 60 years of my life. And I say, not one event has gone waste in my life. God has a great plan for our lives. For me, for you, God has a great plan. I forgot everything about the PowerPoints. You can read it. It's no use for me now. Oh, there is something there. I played Moinil Dhawla cricket in Hyderabad. My <laughs> that's nice. How many went before? Oh, there it is. Okay. You see, that's me as a batsman. In those days, you don't have photographs, no cell phones. So you had to go to Hindu office to get this photograph. The man in the first slip is Sunil Gavaskar. The man in second slip is Ashok Mankar, if you would recognize the guy. I didn't even think. Oh, this is my one of the only of one Ranji Trophy photograph that I had. Our Tamil Nadu team that we played, I think, in Hyderabad or somewhere. It's all going backwards. Well, it, this is no use now. Seriously. Okay, I'm lost a little bit. Doesn't matter. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Now, you know, uh, what, what happened was when I was 25 years old, I've talked a little bit. When I was five, I went through an axe, went through, see if you can get the first slide. Okay. Now, what happened was when I was five, I had this problem for me. That's, you see the third one, a five, a major operation. And I have now 50 stitches on my body from here all the way down to here. So the doc, this was one in thousand people will survive. I'm five years old. My dad told my mom, General Hospital Chennai, the worst hospital you can ever come across. I'm admitted in that hospital. And my dad says, tonight, tonight I will come back. If there is a big crowd, I know that my son is gone. If there is nobody, I will come in. I survived. And when I went through that operation, they said this, you can never use your right arm anymore. I played all my cricket, even today I coach. And I give catches to people with my right hand. God's been good to my life. He is a marvelous God. God has a purpose. 25 years of professional cricket. I remember the first one and I must say this to you. Fateh Maidan, Lal Bahadur Stadium. You okay? Right. Fateh, you used to play in Fateh Maidan. Those days no helmets. You remember that? No helmets. Only now it's there. So first match I was playing the 17th first match against Hyderabad. First match I come in. I'm still 17 and a half. So green wicket, green top, if you know cricket, green top. Don't be like my wife. She doesn't know anything. So green top, and I'm coming to bat. As I come into bat, first aid toss. And I look up to see the, you know, you look up to see this field that is around you. The captain is ML Jeshima, one of the greatest captains from Hyderabad, ML Jeshima. And then standing at cover, I'll never forget this. In front of me, in straight short cover, is Nawab of Pataudi. You know who he is? I know not many of you know, Karina Kapoor's father-in-law. Then you'll know. <laughs> then you'll know that, right? He was one of the best cricketers the world has ever seen. One eye. Prince of Pataudi. Great guy. Great, absolutely brilliant. I've never seen a cricketer better than Pataudi. Better than him. Never seen a better fielder than him. With one eye, he played the West Indian fast bowlings without helmet. And he used to hit him easily. And this guy was in cover. And there's about nine test cricketers from Hyderabad, straight on the first game. There's Abidali, there is Naushir Mehta, Abbas Ali Beg, Jain Tilal, Govindaraj, Krishnamurti, and the list goes down. Mumtaz. They're all there, first game. It was my greatest time when I first stepped down, stepped up in Fateh Maidan. So that's what is there as I played that game. I want to now go... At 25 years, this is again, I met the Lord Jesus as my Savior. Um, my dad was in this deathbed. I'm the only person to a brother and a sister. We have no hope. My mom was paralyzed. My mom had, had rheumatoid arthritis and Parkinson's together. 25 years in bed. And my father is dying. So I walked into the hospital that night, 12 o'clock it was. And I asked the doctor, will my dad survive? And he said something that I will never forget in my life. He said, 
for the next 48 hours or 72 hours, nobody can guarantee life to your father. And here I am thinking, I have no Christ in me. I'm a cricket player. Means nothing. At 12 o'clock in the night, I ask the question, there must be somebody who knows the answer to this. There must be somebody who should be able to give an answer. My dad's dying. What can I do? At 12 o'clock in the night, I started searching for God. Grew up in a Methodist church. Knew nothing about Jesus Christ. And that, that night was the biggest challenge of my life. Great cricketer. Great friends. Everything going well. Working in the Sunmar Corporation. Great. But that night, nothing mattered to me. And then Jesus came. I started searching for him. And then through that time, I came to know Jesus as my Savior. One night in a meeting like this, when I was 25 years old, at the top of my cricket, a pastor preached and he looked at me and said, the answer to all your questions lies in Jesus Christ. And he pointed to me. And I'm saying, God, this man is speaking to me. And I'm crying like a baby in the church that night. Jesus Christ came into my life and he changed me forever. Forever. I became a follower of Christ. Immediately went into sport and mission. And I want to give this. You know what? I want to say life's lessons. Storms and giants are a reality for every Christian. Amen. But the truth is, I want to add this. Giants and storms are a reality, but so is Jesus Christ. So is God. He's alive. Every storm. And I know that me and my wife have stood on the storms for so many times. A year ago, we stood 45 days in the middle of the storm. Giants coming straight at us and storms every day. But we know the storm will pass. At 60 years, the biggest lesson for me is this. Storms and giants are a reality. But Jesus is a bigger reality for me. And he will be that reality of our lives. We lost a daughter, tragically. Me and my she was 18 days only. She died. We, had, we were in ministry at that point of time. Second daughter, and she just died. Huge mistake that the hospital did, and she died. We had no answers. We had no answers. And we're asking God, why? 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 You know, many people say, don't ask the question, why? But when you lose your own daughter, you ask, why? Why has this happened? And then slowly a pastor came to us that day and he said, you know what? There is a great purpose in this. My wife was furious. In fact, she said, ask him to get out of the house. But then 20, 30 years after that, we look back at our life. We have a mission that is called Sangeeta Charitable Trust. This is Sangeeta. Our daughter's name is Sangeeta. They have, we have about 100 kids who don't have a home, cannot study. They study in good English schools. Beautiful mission. And now we know the answer. Because Sangeeta had to die. Unless the wheat of the grain falls down and dies, it cannot produce much fruit. So we realize today that my daughter had to die, that many kids may live. Life has been challenging, but it's been really brilliant for us. Absolutely brilliant. I want to leave this four pillars. Eight minutes, that's a lot of time for me. Nice. Okay. Foundations. I want to leave these four pillars that I kept for myself. Four pillars, and I, I'm sure that we'll be fine as we go on. The first one is foundations. I've learned this lesson from this. This is it. I want to know, I want to make sure all through my life that I love Jesus as my Savior. I pray. I want to read the Bible. All of you in the corporate, remember this one thing. Your skill is never going to carry you through. Your excellence is not going to carry you through. What's going to carry you through is your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's going to carry you through. I've learned it in my cricket. I can go on practicing for hours and hours and hours. Victory comes from the Lord. One day I learned this and I was walking. And the greatest privilege I had was to open the batting with Sunil Gavaskar one day. One match against West Indies. We were playing in New Jersey. Sunil Gavaskar. And so he was the captain and I was in the team. And he said, Moses, come on, pad up. We are going to bat. And I, oh man, West Indies, matting wicket. No helmets, and you play the fast bowler. So he said, come on, let's bat. And I'm getting ready. I padded up, and I went to the nets, and I was batting for 30 minutes. Man, because this is tough wicket. 
you're playing on a matting wicket. And then he, he, he asked a small boy to come. He gave the ball to him and said, just throw slowly to me. And he stood there like this. The, ball, the boy was throwing the ball to him and he went this way. Ah, slow, this is about 10 miles speed. And the guys are going to bowl 100 miles to you. So he did this. He did this for about 10 minutes. I watched him. And then he came back and said, okay, come, let's go. And I asked him. You know, the masters of the game are crazy guys. So I asked him after the break, I asked Sunny Bai, what is the secret? Now I'm trying to battle it out in the ground and I'm trying to do all this. What is the secret? He said, nothing. You know what? You've got to remember this. As long as you have your legs in position, as long as you have your shoulders in position, as long as you have your head in position, as long as you have your bat in position, you'll be fine. Is your foundation really good? He asked me that. And I've never forgotten that. Read the Bible every day. Pray every day. Fellowship every day. Worship the Lord every day. Foundations will be brilliant. The moment we miss it, we are gone. You ask the question, does Virat Kohli have to practice every day? Yes. He has to go back to the foundations. You and I, as Christians, have to go back to the foundations. And you watch how this guy plays. Gavaskar. These guys are bowling 100 miles per hour. And he's got no helmet and the ball's new and it's coming at him. And I'm standing at the other end. The bouncer comes to us, to me, and I go like this. Oh, man. You understand what I say? And here's Gavaskar. The ball comes 100 miles at him. He's watching the ball. The ball's at him and I'm saying, he's going to get killed. And he looks at it and said, and the ball. And the ball's gone to the wicketkeeper. You follow that? It's amazing. I'm from the non-strikers. We see from the stands or from the television, but it's amazing from the non-striker. He's like this. Boom! 100 miles. And he just does that. And the ball goes there. Marvelous. Because of the foundations. And the great lesson for me is, if the foundations are good, I will be good. The second pillar is my identity in Christ. I was doing well. Game at Vizag, we played against Andhra Pradesh. I did well against Bombay. Moses, the Messiah of Indian cricket, has arrived. <laughs> Hindu newspaper, not me. So don't laugh at me. Hindu newspaper, seriously. Seriously. I should have got a copy. I should have got a copy of that. I know that you will not believe me, but it's fine. It's fine. You can go back 1977, September something. Okay? Moses, the Messiah of Indian cricket, has arrived. I go to hide. Um, now crowds have come to watch me play. Seriously, why Zag? Believe me, okay? Now why Zag? Everybody, Moses, 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 first ball. I put my leg in front. Boom! The ball hits here. LBW out. I'm 19 years old. I go back to the room like a baby. I'm crying, oh man, Jesus, why did you do this to me? Seriously, because I thought if I score 100, Jesus is happy with me. If I score a zero, he's not happy with me today. My identity was in sport. And I changed that. My identity became in Christ. Whether I, whether I score a zero or a hundred, he loves me the same. And he died for me. It doesn't matter if I score a hundred or a zero. He died for me on the cross. The third one, purpose of my life. I designed, designed this. I decided for myself, I must have a purpose for my whole life. When I quit the job, I, was, I had worked 20 years with the Sunmark Corporation. Really good company. I loved the, the director. They loved me a lot. So when I wanted to go into full-time ministry, I was already doing ministry there. So I did that. And as I did that, I said, I want God called me into full-time ministry. I battled with it for two years. And then finally, I said, yes, I will quit quit the job. So my managing director said, no, don't go. I'll give you an office in my corporate floor, eighth floor. Only me, vice chairman, and another board member. You sit with me and you can work. I said, no, sir, I'm going to do ministry. He said, I know you've been doing that all the time. <laughs> and I told him, I don't have time. He said, Sake, you don't need to do anything. I'll give you a telephone and a fax machine. You can do your ministry here. So you know what? He did that to me. But I said, you know, I thought about it. Good offer. But I said, if I don't go now, I'll never go. So I told my executive director, I've got to go now. 
and on my resignation letter is written paul moses says his god cannot wait another 6 months <laughs> it's on my resignation letter i am in the hr department i know that <laughs> so uh, so i quit the job and as i was coming out i think a month later i went back to office for something our director of hr was a lady and she's still there so i look hey good to see you here how are you doing excited so i told him what are you doing following my passion i told her and she's the executive director of hr she said oh, paul i wish i could be like you i need the money i'm doing what i don't like i need the money i decided in my life i was 40 and when i was 40 i decided my purpose in life is more important than the money that i'm earning it was more important for me not for all of you but i'm just saying for you for me my wife when god told me that i told my wife i'm going to go into full time ministry she said god has to speak to me too <laughs> i'm earning well two kids so i said we're going to go into full time ministry if he speaks to me we go otherwise we don't go so i had to work two years with her i had to work with her until god spoke to her i manipulated god to speak with her <laughs> and the purpose of life the last one goals the last one and we have 1 minute 10 seconds to go last one on goals i decided you know i am a very happy go so when i when i hear the words excellence i'm a little bit scared i'm a very happy go lucky guy you know i don't i'm not the kind admin my wife is she will fight the smallest battles every one is an intense battle at home not me not me not me i will not fight those intense battles what happened what happened what am no i'm not there so she is here she is a sport she loves it i'm going to get it back when i go when i go to the room i'm in trouble but it's okay it's fine it's fine, it's fine. so i decided i decided at, at the late stage in my life i decided i must have goals in my life we cannot play without goal posts many of us do that isn't it what are you doing brother i'm serving where everywhere <laughs> whoever calls me wherever i can go wherever i can preach man you're playing without goal posts set your goal posts right they'll be fine if you don't set goal posts you'll be the worst nomadic guy in the kingdom of god set goal posts and i put that for my life foundation identity purpose goals times up god bless you right uh, okay yeah.